everybody. Today we're going to be looking at doing a quick variation for our normal mod list, which we're still keeping updated. This one is specifically going to be because we're using it for Twitch. And what we're doing on Twitch right now is we're doing a hardcore playthrough survival that is a majority of no space and no jetpacks. So it's kind of a challenge and I get a lot of questions about the mods in there and the mod list. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure the new list so you guys have it here ready. What I'm going to do is go ahead and hit John to one of my older videos so you guys have that list. I'll remove everything that got removed. I'll highlight that and then I'll tell you guys everything that got put in. So if you're a recurring viewer, go ahead and jump to the end. I'll have all the updates posted there. And if you're here for the first time, great. Check out the mods, see how you like them, go from there. You can subscribe to them for single player or what this is more meant for is to be built into a dedicated server, but it's totally up to you. And also one note that I wanted to make was I think a few people uh, misunderstood what this was. So we have our description here and these numbers are a raw form that you can just copy and paste into your server. Nothing else needs to be done with these numbers right here. When you go lower, this comment right here is where you can go to the Steam Workshop pages. So let's say that you like the resource nodes. Literally just follow it, click it. It's going to take you to that page and you can go ahead and subscribe to it. And that's all it takes to go ahead and look at the workshop page, look at anything in it. It's just a straight connection. Quick disclaimer, this video has a lot of strobing effects, transitions, and flashing lights. Please be careful when watching this video or skip it if necessary. Stay safe, everybody. All right, if you're unfamiliar with how to install mods onto a dedicated server, we're going to be using this GPortal server as an example. If you find a mod you like, you're gonna go ahead and go over to the Steam Workshop page. You're gonna right click it, see that copy page URL, and you're gonna grab, grab that. Then you're gonna head over to your dedicated server list. You're gonna go ahead and paste it and delete everything but the number. Keep in mind that's very important. Now make sure these are going row by row, otherwise they will not work successfully. First mod we're going to be starting with is actually just a framework mod and it's called Modular Encounter Systems. And what this mod does is it handles a lot of NPC spawning and etc. So the main one that's going to be using this one is Exploration Enhancement Mod. Now these are two separate mods as you'll see in the bottom right hand of the video. You will need both to function. But once you have both of those in, Exploration Enhancement Mod is going to be the big one that kind of puts a lot of stuff into your game. It's basically an expansion that has over 200 new ships, stations, and wreckages, and it puts in factions and trading and a bunch more stuff like that. So it's definitely going to be like the most basic overhaul that you want in your survival playthrough. Now the next mod is going to be the Air Traffic Mod. Normally these do spawn up in the atmosphere. I just got this one down on the ground to get a better example of what they are. These do spawn through reputations and they will have NPC shields if you guys install that mod later in the list as well. They will also have jetpack inhibitors and stuff like that so you can't just outright attack them. But in general these guys will spawn in your atmospheres and kind of fly by you. Sometimes they'll attack you, sometimes they'll leave you alone. It kind of just depends what your reputation is with all the factions. If they're red, they don't want to be near you, they'll attack you, etc. Overall, it's a pretty cool mod just to have that little bit of interaction, um, having them fly through your atmosphere and stuff, it makes it feel a lot more lively. Next up, we are going to have the Vanilla Planet Crashed Ground Encounters. Now what this one does is this will actually spawn crash ships around you and your worlds, depending on what planets you're on. It does go over quite a few. They will have variations that look like this. Some are in better condition than others, but they kind of just drops a ship in there and kind of gives you that really immersive feel of crashed ships and you know people have been around past civilizations stuff like that so really cool mod to have and kind of immerses you in the experience now this next mod is going to be a two-part this is actually a speed setting so you're going to need rich hud master and then following that you're going to need configurable parameters specifically what this allows us to do is drop this down and go to environment and we can up our small ship speed which keep in mind that does include uh, player speed and large ship speed and you can mess with these values how you want just be careful as the faster they go the more space engineers has trouble kind of calculating the physics for it and the harder it gets to control yourself as well if you're as well as your ships so once you get to a certain velocity your ships will just essentially disintegrate when they hit something so just keep that in mind next one up is going to be defense shields so this little red bubble is what the defense shield essentially is. If you try and shoot it, it'll block it. Sometimes it'll block collisions. If this wasn't mine, it would block me from coming into it as well. These are slightly configurable with colors and kind of size and 
how much kind of uh, power you want to put into them. Overall, it's a really good mod to just kind of protect your ship before you have to start using physical builds to kind of keep your ship alive. Overall, it's a really good and fun mod to keep your ships in a pretty healthy state without having to sacrifice a ton of physical armor. And then also following super closely with that is going to be NPC defense shields. This will simply spawn NPC shields on NPC ships. So if you see one in the sky, sometimes they're low reflective, but they will usually have one installed in their ship. That way you can't just unfairly fight with a shield and they don't have one. Next up, we have our Nanobot Auto Repair and Build System. So let's say, for example, we didn't want this and you can change your color and set it to turn red. It will sit here and dismantle it and then put the pieces into its own inventory. And let's say we want this built and it has the parts. We'll turn that on to weld and it would finish welding this part. It has a massive radius and a somewhat low power consumption. Overall, it's a really, really very quality of life mod. I actually won't play without it personally. Just keep in mind that if you're on a server with friends or a main server that these will actually start to lag after so many of them are in use. Next up we have Weapon Core. So the original Weapon Core mod is required and then the rest of these will follow. Original Weapon Core mod replaces all vanilla weapons in game with the Weapon Core's version and this just allows for better integration with the mods. And then following these up we have the Weapon Core Railgun, the Weapon Core Octobeam Lasers, which is actually this one, the Weapon Core Obelisk, which is this kind of crystal y guy right here, and our Weapon Core Retractable Plasma Cannon, which is this one right here. These are all very cool weaponry types to have. They do take a little bit to learn, so give yourself the patience to kind of learn how they function. They are a really cool set to have added in. Next up is Life Tech Powers. Now this is a big integration of Detrium and Fusion engines and thrusters as well. And there is some small battery types that use hydrogen and whatnot to produce a little bit of power. So if we hop down here, we have a little uh, fusion engine right there. We have a detrium tank that is going to be the small one. There's, these are the fuel cells that use oxygen and hydrogen to produce a low but very stable amount of power. This is our processor, so we can actually actually pull detrium from stone and ice through, like through our different uh, versions of these. And then we have our actual generators here. And so we have our like really, really big one, which is the 5 gigawatt. This one, which is the three gigawatt, and then this guy, which is the 62.5 megawatt. But even still for a single block uh, reactor, it's still very, very, very strong. And then we're gonna have our detrium tanks here, and then our huge detrium tanks, as well as our fusion thrusters, and our huge fusion thrusters. So if you have a large ship, you will appreciate these applications. Next up, we're going to have an, uh, another really cool one, and this is going to be another one from Night Owl, and this is going to be the Rebel Engines. And so what these are are generally uh, small grid engines that are just designed really well. They look really cool, and they have kind of like different colors and like build schemes, and I just, I really love the aesthetics of it and the applications that they could do to uh, put these in ships. And the best part is that they're all symmetrical, which I absolutely love because I am a freak about that stuff. And they even have a few little afterburners. If we can get them to kick on. There we go. You can kind of see how they all have different colors and whatnot, so. Really good pack by Nido. Next up, we're going to have the Ganymede Tech Mod. This is going to have quite a few things in it, and this all is going to be included in the main one Tech Mod. We're going to have a new health station, an incinerator, which has awesome applications. Our basic assemblers and our refineries which these are 12 times the speed but do require the Ganymede uh, ore to make them. Same thing with our O2 and H2 producer. This is our maglev gear for like our ships and stuff. These are our upgrade modules. They just strap onto the back of the refinery like normal. Our storage modules as well. Also 12 times the storage. This is our big old solar panel boy. He produces way more than a normal solar panel. This is our quantum reactor, which I actually quite like the design. It's a lot more sleek than most designs. More Everyone kind of usually goes for big and bulky, but this one went for flat and sleek, and I really enjoy that. 
This is also a super cool application mod. This is the Quantum Displacement Drive. Generally just your fancy jump drive. Um, but it just looks really cool and I would even use this build outside of normal applications. But it also is just still standing to be a jump drive as well. Good looking. And here we have our Pistons through Ganymede. This one is a 50 foot with no inventory and this one is a 35 with inventory trade. So I'll just keep that in mind. This is our Ganymede uh, airlocks. These attach to ships and you can airlock them. And they kind of just disable like that and then boom back up you're airlocked. And so all of those are included in the Ganymede tech mod. The only one that is not, which is the one we're going to go over right now, is the Ganymede uh, conveyors. And this is a separate one. So just keep that in mind, but I will have that in the list like normal. Just has some updated, really good looking conveyor systems. Next up we have hover engines. These do come in different sizes and armored versions. They quite literally just hover your ship. Very nice mod. Very smooth on planets and stuff. You have to control them obviously, but it does feel very nice to use these. Next up is our hover rail, and you might be thinking, why would you need hover engines and hover rail rails? Well, they both have their own applications, and they're both very good, unique mods in themselves. So, like, these ones have, like, a rails, so they can follow themselves a little bit better, or you can build a little bit more, like, compressed systems. But, like I said, both are super unique and good in their own ways, and this is a really good addition to have a lot of creations come out of both. And this one is going to be the resource nodes mod, and I really like this one personally for, like, aesthetic and very immersive builds, right? Like I said, I don't mess with these, I just use them out of the box. So some of these can be very easily overpowered by other mods. But these just have great designs, they look cool, they're super super immersive. They do make a lot of noise, they shake and stuff like that. So you have a ton of different applications for them. But overall, I really do like these static planet sized builds. Here we have scientific machines. And these are specific to where they allow you to generate credits off of certain tasks that you do. So like there's atmospheric ones, there's gravitational ones. And they're just a very cool application to actually feel like you're actually, I mean, like doing something with the data that you're gathering or interacting with. But I do like it, if not even anything, just very immersive and cool to have. Not that you can tell much right now, but these are the high-tech solar array mods. And so this adds in a couple more solar panels that have better uh, energy production. Just They just require a few different materials, kind of a little bit more expensive, but... Generally, this just makes it to where if you'd like to have solar power, you can have variation and you can kind of have them produce more to where solar is kind of like an actually applicable competitor in the power-like industry. Up next, we have the Pipelines mod. This is one that kind of, I also, like I said, I like those planet side builds. They just look really good. Keep in mind, these do have to be built on two different grids. You can't build these on the same grid. And they do traverse over like, I think it's a kilometer. It's just a really good addition, and they transport resources, of course. It just looks really good and has a lot of applications. Coming up, we have our greenhouse mod. Now, keep in mind that this is cosmetics only, right? But it still does look really good. You have different types of plants. You have these mushroom farms. These, like, obviously the circular versions, shelf versions, and also a few more flat ones. You even got trees. And these like algae farms, which I look, I love the look of these. They look like radiators almost. But another really good, just kind of cosmetic build. It's kind of nice to see some lush greenery in Space Engineers. You kind of forget that it's there. So I really enjoy having that, uh, that green lush in the game. This is going to be the molecular force field mod. And these are just hangar doors that have been reconverted into molecular doors. And so they can... Uh, keep it airtight. They change colors if you go in and out depending on how you have it or you can just change the colors in general And they do get a lot bigger. So there's a few more applications with them as well So really useful mod and it looks really good as well. Next up. We have the overclocked ore detector mod Now these ones just allow literally just stronger ore detectors. There is planet side and space ones So keep that in mind that you do not want to use the space ones on the planet as they're more powerful and can kind of lag your game If you let it so there are a few versions here. We have like a smaller version, the weak version, and then the normal one. And then on the ore detectors, the planet ones can go up to 250 meters. Obviously the weak one's not going to be as far. It's 200. And then the space ones can go up to 5,000 meters. Alright, next up we have the hydrogen farm. 
Well, this one is just because I like to have a way to naturally produce hydrogen. It feels nice to have a system that's actually capable of producing it just based off sunlight and not having to have a colossal amount of ice or to worry about ever running out, having a, a nice little backup system. So that just drops in these hydrogen farms about the same-ish rate of oxygen, give or take. I think they're actually quite a bit faster. It's a very nice convenience mod to have and it has way more applications just in general to kind of build your designs up. Next up, we have the tiered bottles mod, and this just is kind of as it sounds. You can have upgraded bottles. This works for oxygen and hydrogen alike. It just literally is a stronger bottle for them. Very nice and convenient mod to have. Next up, we have the stackable wind turbine. Simple as it sounds, you can just stack wind turbines on each other. I kind of felt it silly that you couldn't do this in the first place, and these all do not inhibit each other, so it's just a very nice convenience power producing mod. Following closely with that, we have pole parts. And these are all just one mod that allows like some spotlights, some lanterns, different designs. Like this one you can actually hook a block onto. So I really enjoyed having these immersive builds kind of where you can have poles around your buildings and whatnot. Next up we have the extreme lights mod. We are in during the day so I did kind of crank this intensity just to show you guys. But this is quite a far, like it is literally called extreme lights for a reason. And this is just a light that allows it to go up to 200 meters. I haven't noticed any lag with anything like these. It's just extremely convenient to put like one of these on every side of your wall so you have the proper reflections and your entire ship is lit up. I personally love it. As you can see, it is a very large radius. I do personally love this mod a lot because I feel like when you have tons and tons and tons of smaller lights, they don't work in the middle when you have like mega builds and they just kind of lag out when there's thousands of them anyway. So Fuel really good simple mod keeping your lag lower in my opinion, and just having an overall lighting source. So next up we have the middle gate extensions mod. Meteor storm inbound. On this one, literally you just kind of put these pieces in the middle and they open up like normal, just in case you have any kind of scary experiments you want to keep hidden away. But they do work very well, obviously, as you can see. And keep all of that stuff locked away. Next up is the battery bank mod. This is just a 3x3 three three that is just actually one piece. And so you would place four of these down instead of the 35 it would normally take you. Just a very convenience mod and I actually really like the look of them. Like you can tell they're meant to be module and that just looks really good. Next up is the clean windows mod. As you can see they are sparkling clean, no window gunk or debris. I personally just prefer this just because the other ones are like impossible to get that nice sleek look. And this does exactly that. Next up is the soil tool. This is just a tool you can hold and place soil down, basically just voxel. You can change the different types of voxel and it does use a gravel type uh, fuel source. Just keep in mind that this is voxel. So do not spawn this in your ship and intend to fly away. If you put this in your ship and you try and fly, your ship will explode or tear apart. So do not use this on anything but static builds. It's worth mentioning that this mod also is capable of removing voxel from your builds without destroying them like a drill would. Also another really nice application with it. Alright, next up we have the health and energy sticks mod. These are just little sticks that come in forms of 25% and 50% for energy and health. You just keep them in your inventory and whenever you get low enough they trigger and kind of just refill your battery or your health. These personally are a game breaker for me. I love these things so much just because I don't have to constantly go recharge every like five minutes at a station. Personally I think these are great and I would include them in every game. Next up we have camera panning. I'm gonna jump in my seat here and jump over to my camera. As you can see I'm kind of stuck looking at myself. If I hold alt I can kind of just look around. If I hold shift alt I can change my orientation. So now I can look this way. I mean, obviously you still have your limitations, but you can kind of start to look around a little bit more. Very nice and conveniencing mod. Didn't even know this was anything in the first place, so this is kind of just like a default for me. Now, you won't notice this one once, but this is going to be the Welder Strobe Reduction mod, and this is literally just takes kind of the strobe away. I personally like this when I play at night, and that welder is just hitting my eyes really hard. So it's just a nice, normal little weld. Next one up is autofill bottles. This one is also just a very uh, kind of convincing mod to where when you run up, it will autofill your bottles. You'll kind of watch your bar sit there and go back and forth. But as you can see, I didn't have a bottle in my inventory because um, it was empty and now I do. And if I go and look in my inventory, it's 31% full. 
so it does take time to fill up but it, it is a nice little autofill feature if you haven't noticed yet i do have a hud compass in the top of my screen this is obviously only for when you're on planets but it is a very nice and easy mod especially if you're playing with friends all right next up we're gonna have our beams and these are mostly just a cosmetic build but i personally think they look really good it like, kind of allows you to show the framework a little bit more kind of it's not just like a big chunk of metal, you know, you kind of have some frames running through or some X's going through, a little bit of structural integrity there. So I personally like this one a lot. Really good mod. Next up, we have our panel hinge mod. And this one kind of just allows folding of certain applications, but mostly solar panels. Kind of go ahead and throw this up real quick. Let's see if we can get them here. And we'll kind of reverse these and you'll see they kind of unfold outward. Obviously, you have to be careful with how you build these because this could be a very easy way to summon Clang. But when built right or just in general, they are a very cool and kind of like inclusive mod. And last but not least on our list, we have our smart rotors. These simply will just follow the sun. You can attach blocks to them and obviously solar panels. Just be careful of your build clearance. Um, but simple as that. Good mod. All right. And now for our updated list. So to kick it off, we're going to be looking at the sifter. So what this does is turns gravel into elements. This does have a rate, so go ahead and check that out and make sure that it's not too overpowered or underpowered for you. There are stronger ones than this, but this is one of the more balanced ones we found. Next up, we have the advanced power systems. And what these do is they have bigger batteries, like mega batteries, some cool new solar panels and they kind of have offsets and different designs so it's very good looking and we have some really cool looking new um, wind turbines that are also stackable so it also brings along this high-tech hydrogen engine which comes with its own tank i probably should have made these a different color but that's okay so the next one we did is the aerodynamics mod which also comes with wings and what this does is kind of put an aerodynamics obviously like an atmosphere that you can actually use on your ships so you can glide and actually propel yourself forward with wings and whatnot to hold yourself up. So it's been very interesting to experiment with this and a very fun aspect. Next up, we have the moisture vaporator, quote unquote. So what this does is pull small amounts of ice from the air, which it obviously in turn returns to oxygen and uh, hydrogen if you put it into a converter. So kind of just a slow production ops to actually be able to use atmospheres to produce resources. Next up's a little bit more simple one, but it's just an airlock block is what it's called. Quite literally, you step inside, you hit F, and you step out. Basically eliminates the need for sensors and a double door system. Just a nice and simple airlock door. Next up, we have the iris doors. Still a very cool looking mod. And just adds you that extra touch of aesthetics and whatnot when you want that kind of that cool feeling walking into a big laboratory or something. So pretty cool. And then we have our domed cockpits here, which this is a set of blocks that are glass, airtight, whatnot. Um, as you can see here, there is a, a little bit of shade through that. You can see right through them on the other side. And so these can complete a full dome. And you have a bunch of extra pieces here to kind of mix and match just a little bit. We have a planet that was built to be used with the water mod. So we have a planet and a water mod that kind of work together to create this uh, environment for us. Because we wanted a more planet sized build, so we wanted to be a little bit more immersed. And so what this does is spawns with water on the planet, as long as you have the water mod installed when you uh, spawn the planet. And so this one's actually a really cool planet. They actually put a lot of detail in it. It has some little Easter eggs in it, noises, stuff like that, like fun comparison with the uh, water mod. Some of the land has like little secrets in it and there's a, a super volcano on the mountain and stuff like that. So there is a lot of cool things here. You can't see very well, but you have a little depth meter and you can go into the down into the ocean. If you listen, you can kind of hear the ambience of it. So overall, it's been very fun to experiment with the water mod, the aerodynamics mod, all these together. Just have a really fun environment. Um, do keep in mind, you do have to spawn this planet in when you um, go to use it, essentially. So if you've never done that, what you have to do is you have to be in creative mode. You have to use shift plus F10. And you'll actually go to this planet section right here. And so whereas we have this one right here, you just go to spawn. You do want to make sure that you have 120 kilometers on this one. 
and you would just fly to a safe spot and pop it in. If you're not familiar with admin mode, what you can do is hit F8 and that's going to take you into a spectator version. And you can use your normal AWSD and you can hold shift with the mouse scroll, to go really fast or really slow. And that'll allow you to kind of fly around and look around, spawn planets. And so let's say I wanted this one over here. I just go ahead and click it and it would just pop right in. All right, another fun one we kind of just put in. This one's kind of more of still testing the waters. We thought it'd kind of go good with the boat theme for the, uh, the water mod. This one is the wood harvesting and wood blocks mode. So quite literally, when you harvest a tree, I have no power. All right, now that I have power, I'll show you guys. You can cut the trees down with your grinder. And they kind of just pop into these uh, wood logs. And you can pick these up and convert them into like lumber, like planks. I'm just going to show you guys because I have it. And then you can just place these down as wood. Now keep in mind these do not paint. They stay like they are. You still have all the basic designs, whatnot. And then you actually even have a storage, a little cargo chest. So, pretty cool mod. Kind of just nice to have overall. Cute little fun mod just to kind of throw in there for the boats and whatnot. All right, and last but not least, we're going to have the pipes and wires mod pack. This one's another aesthetic but really good looking cosmetic building style. You have dirty pipes and clean pipes. And then you have these like electrical panels that you can actually access. And these pipes that come out. You have these wire molds right here. Some have support, some don't. You have these ones that kind of hang from the ceiling. So just kind of another like cool. You can really like bring out the, like the details in some of the ships with some of these things. So, All right, now for some of the ones we removed. We removed stronger oxygen farms, dynamic laser compression modular thrusters, AQD upgradable gyroscopes, the Night Owl mini reactor pack, and the nanobot drill and fill system. The reason we did this is because we don't need more oxygen. The dynamic laser compressions were a little strong for what we wanted to and we're not doing a lot of space travel so we didn't need them. AQD is for very large ships and we aren't using those right now. Night Owl Mini Reactor Pack, we're actually not using reactors in this build. We're actually trying to keep everything 100% green power. And the Nanobot and Drill Fill System was just very overpowered, just bluntly. It was a very, very strong drill. All right, and that is gonna be for this playthrough that I'm doing on Twitch. So if you guys think that sounds cool or you guys wanna come watch, go ahead and hit me up on Twitch. I have kind of an irregular schedule right now, but I try and stick to, to my schedule. So just keep an eye on that. And hopefully you guys all enjoy these mods. Go give a big shout out to these create. <clears throat> these content creators because seriously these mods are super awesome and some some of these are still working after years so big props to those mod creators and like i said i'm gonna have all their steam workshop pages listed in the description and the comment um it sounds like for the description we're gonna leave a raw list and in the comment we'll have all the steam the steam links kind of like i showed in the beginning of the video so hopefully you guys really enjoy all these and have fun